And if you guys think they can win that one, hashtag CIS win is the one you want to be sending out on Twitter. Yeah, that's right. Of course, a very experienced team is the CIS's individual players, but you can't actually look past the C roster. All of them have a lot of experience, it seems, actually playing those assassins. Even their top laner, I believe, had a stint playing mid. So they've all tried their hand at those particular champions. Absolutely. I mean, you have to go back to Opidemus's Season 2 Cassidy play. We haven't seen too much Cassidy right now, but it is, of course, available. And we'll have to see as we get into champion selection if he's going to be opting to lock that one in. Rano P, though, I think he might be the secret weapon for this team. Yeah, Ron OP may well be that champ uh, player. Of course, Challenger playing a lot of Assassins as we are finally starting to see all the champions picked and or hovered. Oh, got a few lock-ins already. Okay, so we'll take a look. Uh, support side, Edward, you might recognize that name. Goes ahead and locks in Pantheon support. And we have what looks like to be our first Master Yi of the Assassin mode. Whoa, I'm a little bit perplexed with why <laughs> Lex is the one locking in Master Yi and going for Smite. This could be interesting. Yep. Also, where is my Diana? Uh, yeah, it's a little surprising. We're not going to be seeing uh, that particular champion right now, considering what it was able to do last game. The LeBlanc, definitely not surprised, but a mirror match between Optimus and Kira. That's going to be interesting. Yeah, the LeBlanc mirror matchup could be quite heavy hitting. Of course, the exact same spell combos on each other can get creative and attempt to outplay. It seems like uh, Team Ice have got something in the water over there, though, with the Shakos. Also being around, a bit confusing after the last time we saw it. Well, you know, Carbon, he did try to go in and then pretty much gone out several occasions, but we'll see if Zanzara is able to pull something a little bit different. The Akali is actually what surprises me the most. On the side of Smurf, we already saw how that matched up against a Pantheon last game. Yeah, uh, Akali was, it does a lot of damage, right? It's got a lot of, I guess, 1v1 potential when you start getting those items, but a Pantheon is a Pantheon. And if you try and trade with him, he will actually just press his W key and stun you, and then just hit you with all of the whizzy ones, as Atlas calls it, and spears everywhere. Yeah, and you pretty much can't really stop that from coming. Even if you throw down the Twilight Shroud, you're still able to just knock him damage down, and that's going to be hard. We'll have to see if Smurf's got something else up his sleeve, and maybe he's looking to get you know some help from his teammates. Once again, guys, don't forget those hashtags, hashtag SEA win or CIS win, depending on if you think Fire or Ice is going to take this one away. Team Fire is way up on the board right now, 5-2 to two in the scoreboard, but this could definitely be the CIS's win here if they do have some cheesy strategy that we were not expecting. That's right. The hopes and dreams of Team Ice are kind of just behind the CIS team, and if they can't actually get themselves into the bracket on the fourth day. They need to find a way to beat CIS, so maybe the rest of ICE is hoping they lose a little bit here. Could be. Little tactics in there. See what the start is for LCL as they uh, send themselves three top and two towards the bottom, but is the five-man invade for Team Fire right now. Those two are not in the bush. Ah, uh, the ward will spot them, unfortunately. They're having a good dance, too. Yeah. Don't interrupt a dance battle. Definitely not. It's, uh, Gentleman's game to not try and get the damage out early when you're too busy working your feet. So, we'll see where they decide to make the next move. Looks like it's back towards the jungle. Kira might face check this, though. He's just scouting for vision. Of course, the CIS team or the LCL team are actually setting up that double jungle strategy. So, the Shaco will be starting on his red side. I wouldn't be surprised to see him immediately yeah, rotate to blue. Fun. And then we've got Lex, who has Smite. So, we have to question where he's actually going to start and if Levy's able to get the buff, or if Master Yi can smite it away. Yeah, I would be really curious to see what Lex decides to do this game, if he actually does stay in lane and then use that smite later on, uh, you know, for some counter jungling or for some buff stealing. This ward spotting here, Levy's actually waiting out in this brush, but you can see Lex, Lex wants to smite it. There we go, start this one off. We'll see if Lex, he's just outside the vision, the ward will spot him, but he moves forward. He's got that smite available, goes oh, in, nope. and he can't quite get it. Levy takes away the blue. Yeah, so Levy does get it. This could actually be quite a bad thing for the LCL team, simply because it's a master here who doesn't get to start with the camp, and he also used his smite, so not going to be available. But Zanzara being a little bit cheeky. Remember, he's the Ivan innovator. Well, he is time looking to make Shaco great again, but forces a flash at a QTV. That's the end of that gank. Yeah, they're not going to find anything. Zanzara will continue to move, though, towards the blue buff as a... Uh, once again, unfortunately, Marcy ruins it. <laughs> yeah, just almost the League of Thunder Rose. Last time we had one Storm Raider Surge. This time it's just one for a battle, but I suppose it makes sense on Master Yi. Alpha strikes in. Uh, that didn't make as much sense as he backed away, and Celebrity's on the chase. We haven't talked about this Nocturne yet, but he's getting a little bit low. Edward, he's the one really body blocking everything as they sidestep from Rano P's Charm. Yeah, the red side just generally getting bodied overall. There's nothing they can do, and we have to highlight this, I guess, 2v2 matchup. Nocturne, the first time we're going to be seeing him. 
Very good assassin at level six, but up until that point, we'll be using all of his mana, running into a spot of bother, unless his team comes to help, oh, and they are. Oh, Eddie, he gets charmed. They turn on Celebrity, though. Those autos are real. The teleport's coming in, oh, but it might be too late. First blood, however. Lex is able to pick it up, but gets equalized by Levy, and now Rano PB and chased down by Kira. The chains will end. They finish the job, and an auto kill, or auto attack for a double kill. On Akira. Kira is a mathematician, throws out the chains and does the no look as if it were an explosion to follow up with the double kill as well, saving all those spells and LCL actually kicking it off the right way as a counter gank to Levy's Kha'Zix. Yeah, nice to see Kira utilizing that teleport as well uh, early on because Optimus, you know, he went for the much more aggressive actual summoner spell, if you will. But let's take a look at how it all went down again because it looked like Lex. His days were numbered, Edward just behind him. Yeah, exactly. And this starts with the charm actually connecting, but Celebrity not respecting that Master Yi. So they do get the first kill and almost the second. Has watched the, the bad arsery. That it never mind. Yep, it's back continuing. to the LeBlancs. There's the Ignite burn, but Optimus he has a slightly better advantage here now that QTV, though, is in a 1v2 situation. Forced back from the Shaco box, getting chased under tower, and he actually is able to get away. Even lands a parting shot. Yeah, and they both get away, so the camera panning doesn't actually that mean too was, much in the end. That was disappointing. It was a little bit lacking. Maybe it's the fact that the assassins just take far too long to scale with the champions they have chosen. Ah, lethality. It's an unfortunate thing, too. They've limited the scaling. Also, I agree with Vedius. They should all be spamming long swords. There should be no lethality purchased early. There you go. It's the... Uh, the good old 1v1 strategy we saw a little bit of yesterday. All the swords. All of them. Well, speaking of early damage, a lot of the summoners are already burned right now, so you'd think people would be taking a step back just a second. CIS, they do have the gold advantage, but it's so early on, right? Celebrity's waiting in the wings here as Edward and Lex are cautiously stepping forward. Ron's trying to bait. And don't be fooled, it's not a jungler. It is still a bottom lane nocturne. My immediate thoughts go towards him jungling as well. Yeah, I was wondering, where's the AD carry? Oh. Yeah, yep. but we're going to have a pretty uh, slow start to this game. I think reminiscent of the last one, the Akali and Pantheon will hit each other a few times, but no one really dies there, as they are going again with Optimus. You say no one really dies there, Rusty. I don't know if that's going to be the case, Celebrity. Gets the kill credit, and Levy's coming in. It's still a 3v2 until the LCL realizes maybe we shouldn't keep pushing. Yeah, and another good move this time from the C team as LeBlanc from their side actually comes down. It's really hard to keep track of mirror matchups, as... They may actually meet each other here. Would be LeBlanc. Oh, the chains. Optimus steps outside the range. Levy Kira's packs in. Man. He wants to go back. Whoa, Kira. The Honeyfruits popped. Levy's going to try to get the heal. He has to hop over. One more auto attack would finish the job, but Kira's not able to close the gap. Meanwhile, Lex is 1v2, and Rano P takes him down. No, they do get a kill. It was uh, close, especially even in that top lane. Smurf has about 10 health to his name, but everyone gets out after a single further kill goes on to Lex. Not having the best time, but... I'm honestly not surprised, as he is a Master Yi. Yep. And the timely spell shield from Celebrity there. He's able to stop the chains from doing anything to him. Very even start, very close on the kills. We'll see if that's about to change as Kira is worse for the wear. Does have the level advantage, though, and Optimus now has to back away. He's equalized. Yeah, Kira hits the bounce. The LeBlanc mid lane 1v1 is a giant mind game. And at the end, at this stage anyway, having a Negatron Cloak will ultimately be the difference. Any trade that even goes the exact same amount of damage or spells that connect, Kuro will always win it. Yeah, not to mention Darksteel doing pretty good work when you got 2-0 and to start this game. So Kira, not known as an Assassin player, but he's definitely made this LeBlanc work well for him. And he's even forced Optimus to back away, building that farm advantage for the time being. What is that? Ah. Minion kills. They're not very important in this mode, I understand. But that's why we're starting to see so many LeBlancs and why it is in most people's S tier in their tier lists. Mm. That wave clear means that you don't actually need to even build AP. However, in this mode, you have to, because you have to be a man. Yep. You can kill those Negatron cloaks, but you have to turn them into an aggressive item. We'll expect to see the Abyssal Scepter soon. As QTV heads back up towards the top to deal with Smurf, who dashes in. Twilight Shroud's down, and QTV has actually not been able to get too much. Does get a stun off, but the dash comes in again into the bush. But there's Vision spotting him out, and he's got backup, so Smurf backs away. Yeah, times it really well. Of course, all three dashes from the Akali Ultimate user Zanzara will be here, and they will be accidentally 2v2ing as we're about to see it. Zanzara poofs, and he jumps back in. They turn for Smurf, and Levy gets the kill. Now Zanzara's isolated, and he's gone down. That's a double kill for Kha'Zix. Yeah, Kha'Zix's patience pays. 
Ice lose two of their members and very well executed once again from the GPL side. Z doing work. This time though, Optimus has the jump on Kira. They're just trading autos as they were out of spell rotations. Kira is gonna have to hop. <laughs> And he actually is able to escape and he even burned the Ignite. Meanwhile, back down bottom side, Edward is exhausted. They just gun for him and Celebrity finishes him off. Lex isolated now. Will go down up before he picks two. that up. Ron OP finishes him off, but man, he made the best out of a 1v2. He definitely is. You've got to give some credit to Lex. All things considered, champion choice considered. The fact that he is somehow in this bottom lane uh -oh. still makes it work for Kira. Here we and go. And the chains, point blank. Ron OP is going to nail the charm, but the distortion, the dash, the auto, it follows! And Kira picks up the kill. The slightest amount. He almost got out alive there as well, Ron OP. Does not. Kira now 3-0. Didn't have to use his flash, so might have been able to still chase him in the end. Good Ooh. moves from the uh, mid laner of the LCL. Yeah, nicely played. And, you know, we really didn't expect necessarily a flashy assassin play coming out of him. Might have been not in his wheelhouse, but it turns out that this LeBlanc is doing him some serious favors right now. On the other side, Levy is the one uh, who's contributed the most to the kill score on the side of the Southeast Asian All-Stars. Still not the only one. That bottom lane's been doing a little bit of work itself. There's definitely a lot more fighting than what we saw in the last one, this early in the game anyway, as uh, Kira's just having a giggle, as it wasn't actually Kira. So uh, Pantheon has got LeBlanc's his ultimate. Even more distortion. Okay, Celebrity's gonna run headlong into this, and right into Edward! Spell Shield does nothing! Kira's gonna take another kill. Scribbles down another name in his death note, four and zero. Yeah, good night, Nocturne. Level six doesn't actually make a difference when running away from people. And again, this is the common trend we're going to see from all these assassins. Nope. And Smurf's gonna try and tag in onto Optimus, who has no idea he's here until right about now. That's gonna burn the flash, and with Levy around, Smurf won't go any further. Seven to six, though. Very even for 10 minutes in. We've been seeing lopsided games. Yeah, it definitely is. The bottom lane has a lot of kills from the side of Team Fire, whereas Ice is spread through the middle lane in the Master Yi. The difference here is how they're going to use these threats. Nocturne and Ari need their ultimates. Kira can just show up. Pretty much, and he's gonna have teleport back in just a little while. Meanwhile, though, QTB is getting the 1v1 on Smurf. We've just seen the scattered 1v1s, but What's going to make the difference is all these roams. Zanzara is heading up towards the top side. They own the vision in this jungle. At Ten minutes into this game. They're sending three up here, but once again, Levy, right place, right time. Flash jump, Smurf! In the Twilight Shroud, he's gone down, and the man drop comes from around the side. Edward looking to take down QTB. Pantheon on Pantheon, but they brought friends to the party. And Zanzaro get his clone popped. And that is not the kind of fight that they want to be taking when QTB is already doing this much work. Now Lex runs the risk of being dove and has to be careful. However, he wants to fight them. He does. It's a few auto attacks and make him think twice. He alpha strikes to dodge the charm. That's the AD carry mechanics. Edward still looking for something, but there's a lot of minions and the tower should go. Zenzara just doesn't really have health, so I'm not sure what his plan is here. Yeah, just kind of waiting around in the wings. He's got a lot of swords, but I don't think he really has too much of a plan right now. Kira is going to be coming up, but Levy and QTV are already backing away. It seems like LCL team is a bit slow on the draw. We'll see if it works out. Edward trying to stop the backs, and it looks like he succeeded. Kira comes around. Edward's oh. going to pay with his life, however. And can Kira make the 1v2 here? Zanzara has only been able to show face and cause a distraction. It looks like the answer is yes. That is a monstrous LeBlanc now for the LCL side. Kira 6 and 0, and he is definitely getting those stacks, Pyra. Oh, yeah. As the trade is still going to be there, however, they're pushing. See, have got a game plan, and they're sticking to it. It's all about the objective game for this team. So two tower kills now. They'd already gotten the first tower blood. For the Vietnamese All-Stars, CIS have just had to fall back here, and Lex oh, is in Lex. serious danger of being dove. He nails, it's nailed by the charm, but all of a sudden, Alpha Strike buys him half a moment, nothing more. And Optimus picks up his kill, the first kill for that LeBlanc. That's a feels bad, man. This Master Yi has been completely left on his own. Edward, now River Pantheon. River Pantheon not necessarily doing the work they needed, and Optimus is going to fall down. And as they say it, uh, the caster curse becomes real, and Edward picks up a kill. However, Celebrity's caught out as well, and Kira, seven on the game. He's godlike at 12 minutes. Yeah, he better go back and get a Mijo Soul Stealer yeah. after he deals with Ron. Smurf's also here. There will definitely be a, an attempted fight. They jump right on him. Levy trying to save his life here by pushing Smurf back and away, but QTV has hopped right in on the Twilight Shroud. Unfortunately, he nails the wrong Shaco. And Kira tries to hunt one more cheeky kill, thinks better of it, and he will be going back along with the GPL team. 
Yeah, that's right. Again, you have to respect the amount of stacks that Kira does have in his inventory and all of the control that he is starting to ooze to the rest of the lanes. We are going to see this dive again onto Lex. Oh, uh, I'm going to cover my eyes. You just have to feel so bad for the man after the charm connects. There is no hope for him. Except that they are able to turn this around. And again, that River Pantheon that we were alluding to before is able to have utility in, I guess, a standard support losing the game in solo queue fashion. Comes down to act like he's helping, but really he's just stealing the kills that his team's getting for him. Yeah, you might as well just start building damage, right? That's what the Assassin mode's all about. Uh, since you don't have the option to play a much more defensively minded game, the Serrated Dirk for Edward, because he couldn't quite keep getting enough long swords. And I'm a little disappointed that Kira did not opt to finish the Medjais. He's still sitting on a fully stacked <laughs> Dark Seal at the moment. So 10-10 uh, in kills. We are at a very close game right now. But the towers are making all the difference for the Southeast Asian All-Stars. Right now another kill might happen. Lex has seen the pass flash before his eyes and before the teleport channel completes. He's fallen down, but it was a double teleport all along. Kira and Smurf double up to take down QTV, and they even bring Smurf to the party. Watch out, Pantheon. Oh, Eddie! He stepped right into it, but this time he's the one who pays with his life. Celebrity takes the kill. Kira is going to fall. It's a double kill over to Optimus, who's on the run. Smurf dashes. Smurf finishes the shutdown. He's not done either. And now he's on to Celebrity, who just has not had a break this game. And he's actually going to be able to get away right over the pit. Yep, Celebrity is able to get out with his life. And just a lot of fighting overall. Lots of people actually going down and dying. But Smurf is the biggest winner that eventuates from all of this. Celebrity, just go back to base, man. You had a good run. Now, yeah, Smurf's first kill on the game, too, so some much needed gold for him. And he's going to be able to clear and push up topside, but once again, the CIS region, they're hellbent on fighting this out and bringing a lot of people to the party, but they don't have a tower to show for it. Yeah, definitely not. And also, the lack of towers that ICE have on their own team means that QTV and Levy are able to do dives like this quite easily as a... Uh, he doesn't really live long here. Kira also comes in and does a whole lot of work again. Yeah, I mean, they were able to get some revenge, but the problem that Lex has had as Kira gets jumped on and tries to make his great escape, stopped by the chains and triple teamed. Levy will finish him off, as I was saying. Uh, I think Lex's problem is that he thinks he's Trindomir. Yeah, maybe. I will have to actually say that wasn't a caster curse, that was a stats person curse, as I just got told that Kira did 42% of his team's damage, and then uh, we promptly come back to watching him die again. Yeah, well, there's lots of curses in League of Legends and Assassin mode. You can really never be too sure, as Edward is going to find himself on the wrong end of Celebrity after he hunts him down, starting to scale up here 5 4 and 4. The Nocturne creeping and crawling towards a positive kill score. Meanwhile, though, Fire is on the mid inner tier. Alpha Strike from Lex pushes them off for now, but it's not healthy. Yeah, there's definitely the strategy that Master Yi is, if you used to play APE, would have is you queue to a minion as it's dying so you don't actually travel any distance, and you can clear waves and be safe as a Speaking of Celebrity. Woo, buddy! Okay. Uh, I think Celebrity might have stuck around a bit too long, but this is going to open up the floor to the first dragon of the game. It is a Mountain Drake, available for Team Fire, Levy, and QTV make short work of it. Yeah, and I guess we've already found our answer. How do you uh, win with the Shaco in the team composition? The answer is have Kira in your team. Let's speak of the, de the it's devil. a very specific strategy, as you say it. It just keeps Three on him. You know what? That man is actually just being ganged up on. And well. he needs to wait for his team, the bread man, to help him out. It's a little bit too late. It's a good move, though, honestly, yeah. from, C from the GPL side. If they want to win this game, they need to take out the strongest and really the only member of the LCL team that has money, and that is Kira. Well, they're definitely taking advantage of the fact that he is overstepping his own boundaries. Now, good news for the CIS team is they do find themselves an open turret here, but it's taken them a really long time to clear it away, and they're so far behind the curve. This would be their first versus the four that the Southeast Asian team have already picked up. So they get one turret, they get a little bit of gold for themselves. 17 minutes into this game, it's still very close, but you can see Seed creeping ahead. You definitely can, and also selfless itemization from QTV and Levy both going Black Cleaver to complement one another. They're going to effectively be that dynamic duo, and if they get in there first and Nocturne's able to follow it up, he'll be doing a ridiculous amount of damage, to say the least. Things yep. are looking quite good for the GPL team. Yeah. And uh, Team Ice's hopes in this assassin mode are starting to dwindle here as Optimus is going to get outplayed by Kira, who sidesteps from Levy and Ron OP. But the rest of the teams here, they were trying for the Rift Herald, but it's just not nearly as important. QTV taking on Edward in a Pantheon on Pantheon fight, and a double kill goes over. 
to the top laner from the GPL. Zanzara having to poof over to the Krug pit to avoid the damage that's going to follow. He's going to do Krugs and get spotted by QTV uh, immediately. I don't know after. if this is the smartest move. Give some Krugs away. Now note that Kha'Zix is below him, so eventually they will meet. Or he'll actively avoid them. Either way, they're still winning the game here for better or worse. See it do, doing the right things, getting the structures, getting the gold. And they're uh, effectively a snowballed assassin comp. I, but this is what's crazy to think about. You have a LeBlanc that is 10 and 4 on this map, and you're losing this game. Let's Speaking of that one, let's take a look at what Kira's able to do here. Because Kira can only really kill one person in a single rotation. He was cooldown locked up to this point. He used his ultimate. Again, big outplay, I will say, from the LeBlanc to get the kills. But look at what he can provide from this point onwards, whereas the C region have just got all five members doing damage, working as a unit. And it's, I guess it's a bit weird to say five assassins working as a unit, but they are. Yeah, well, I mean, they've taken the tack of, uh, you know, assassins can sometimes work better together. And uh, considering they just have so much more comfort overall on these champions, it's not hard to see why. As Kiri does some fancy footwork, he's comfortable enough, but as you said, it's only one man, even if he can make himself look like two. And two LeBlancs laughing is atrocious to hear. And they both use their ultimate at the same time. It's only once a year, Rusty. We can handle it. It's like if Singe and LeBlanc were in the same game, the amount of laughter you'd get would be absurd. I actually have experienced that. Poor soul. I'm the only one who plays Singe, though, so... Uh, that I've encountered on the regular. Let's not talk about that, though. It's all about the Assassins. We're cresting 20 minutes. We're getting close to it anyways. Rano P picks himself up the blue buff, and... He has definitely had not too terrible a game. And I think it's fair to say that considering how he climbed a challenger, this is uh, something that's definitely more in his wheelhouse. I see how this team dynamic works now, though. Ron OP gets the blue buff, Optimus does not. It says a lot when the support's able to get a blue buff as a higher priority. And as we said, that Optimus was losing a lot of damage, as he just got freaked out by Kira. Mm -hmm. This has been more of a distraction, if anything else. And Zanzara is coming around the side, but Kira jumps right into three and he has to bail out before he's evaporated. Zanzara, they just take out his clone. He escapes, not but not for long. Charm goes wide. They find Edward. QTV flashing back out of the way. And the Shroud will keep Team Fire from pushing further into this base, but only for a moment. It's 20 minutes and they're on the inhibitor turret. Yeah, the Shroud may stop them. Smurf does well to push them back, but they're also five assassins who do not excel at sieging. This is the only opportunity they will have and it's 10 seconds until Kira and Lex are up. Well, they can hit this turret down, no problem. They still have some time on the clock. It is a 3v5. Edward's just throwing Spears waywardly to no see if he can push him off. That's not going to be the inhibitor, but they have cracked the base. So Kira's going to teleport mid lane. There's no dragon, there's nothing he'll look for. It's more just to get that middle lane turret down. You would expect, however, the health that you can see, thank you, spectators, is actually quite high. It does mean they might. You know what? I lied. It's the LCL region. They'll probably just try and Baron. Yeah, let's go for it. It's been on the rift for about 45 seconds. Sounds about right. Uh, get themselves over the wall. Zanzara's going to pop it, and they just blast cone over. Yep, sneaky, just doing sneaky. It. But this time, there was a ward spotting them. So let's see how fast Team Fire no. can get to the party. Pantheon does have his ultimate if they get there in time. He's going You're for it. it now. They're a little bit low. The man drops incoming. Oh, this Baron is up for grabs. He jumps on it. Edward takes him out. It's Optimus that takes the kill. And all of a sudden, this is now looking like a good plan. The Baron, it's stolen. Levy takes it. And C have come up with everything. And only Kira left alive. You would expect them to be able to push now by having that Baron buff and the aggressive decision that comes out of the CIS region from the LCL team is not going to work this time because you know what? GPL were ready. They had a control ward on the pit waiting for him to actually go for it. Take notes, everyone playing against CIS. Always ward up the Baron pit, give them some time and then bait them in. But man, as soon as we're talking about Optimus being kind of a distraction for his team, he gets the triple kill, and they steal the Baron away with Levy. That's going to break the base even further, so they take inhibitor number oh. one, and Kira tried to make the outplay. But there's still five men standing on the GPL side, and another double kill for Optimus. Yeah, there is five, albeit really low health, and so they will have to back away, you would expect. Uh -oh. Except for Levy right now, this could be a, a spicy meatball. That was a cheeky clear. He got the best that he could out of it. Smurf definitely is not going to stop looking, but Baron Recall, they can completely reset. So now the five assassins of the GPL side can look towards that bottom lane inhibitor. That is Bear. Yeah, they're, they're definitely going very, as far as conservative as you can go <laughs> when you're playing in assassin mode. Three Maws, uh, you've got a Rylize, so you get a little extra health out of that for Ron OP. So they're not getting insta-give. And so we you do can get see what to, happened uh, here. 
Watch this one again. It all starts with the Pantheon coming in. Optimus is the man you have to look towards as he does start picking up these kills. He flashes inside and effectively cherry picks all of the work that Baron had did had done already for him. Kira, the only survivor, using a blast plant. Yeah, and speaking of Kira, I mean, this guy is doing everything he can to keep this game afloat for CIS. We just got word from our stats that he's done twice as much damage as anybody on the SCA team, and they're still getting pushed into base. I mean, there is 16 kills, and he has 11 of them, and has been in 13 of them. It says a lot about the work Kira has been trying to do for his team. He has made one crucial mistake, though. He did not buy that Magi's. Yeah, I mean, I agree, and then coincidentally he died a lot after we said it, so perhaps it was the mentality of, you know, when you buy a Magi's, you, you appreciate that the stacks are really important, and you'll try not to die as best you can. Kira has been having all of the GPL side thrown at him. It's Assassins, maybe Magi's is risky. Yeah, that's true. But, it, I mean, it's a but manly item, it, he should be a man. He wasn't able to do much. Yes, he absolutely should. And uh, speaking of fun items, you know, we have an Edge of Night finished up by Edward here, who, you know, he's been dropping out of the sky. Unfortunately, he's just not able to stay alive for very long. And I actually like this item above most of the other AD options. We already said this on the analyst desk, and Mithy pointed this item out in particular. It's an offensive item that gives you something defensive. You can activate it, get your Banshee's Veil on his Pantheon, activate it, and then ult. You will have that Banshee's to stop the Ari charm or something, in this case, from stopping, like, stunning you down. Yeah. It's just a little difficult when everybody on the enemy team is at least two levels ahead of you, and as no resistance is offered up top, the SEA team is able to take out yet another tower, leading some Baron and Power Minions up to the top side. And Zanzara's Zanzara around in. the back. We've got Edwards looking to man drop out, but Zanzara's already down, and the chaos is reigning supreme as Smurf pops Rano P. A double kill, however, goes over to Optimus. SEA, they're looking to finish this one off, or rather bail out of this one as Ice have managed to find the kills that they need. Oh. But is it going to be enough? Levy! No oh, that mod's paying for itself. That was disgusting. This is why you evolved the Q on Kha'Zix. That's what we just learned then. And Master Yi, 2 and 8, has a Phantom Dancer and a Blood Razor. That's not enough crit or damage to actually take the Kha'Zix out. I mean, that was so much blood. Optimus I got, got juke there, and Edwards is going to walk right into Optimus. But who's caught who? Woo! Okay. Uh, nope. Oh, oh no, you use the Wait clone? a minute! All right, now I'm lost. Classic this misdirection. And the Baron recall is going to be enough, even though he did it on a ward. What a cheeky devil. Now that was beautiful. Plus one for style points. And I think across the board, style points to be considered here from uh, Ice as they get to engage with the Shaco and Pantheon combo. Eyes are always going to be on Kira, however. Flashing in, getting the two distortions is going to what be what really determines the outcome of this fight. Yeah, that was really nice. It, you, what I missed the first time around in this fight was the fact that they sent the Shaco clone in, Zanzar himself bailed out, and then all of a sudden, there were no spell rotations for the SEA team because they thought they were popping the Shaco and Kira just had his way with them. Yeah, exactly right. And being able to live there feels bad, honestly. Yeah, I'll Kha'Zix take a look at the fight work. done in that, or the damage done in that last fight. Starting to see more damage from the rest of the team. Zanzara showing why we uh, didn't really want the Shaco to begin with. However, as it progresses, as Shaco gets more items, you'd expect more from him. But a Titanic Hydra is what we have seen. And again, we were talking about this being the man mode of League of Legends, the most exciting action-packed game mode we can possibly make. And he's gone for a halfway item instead of an Infinity Edge or a Static Shiv on his Shaco to actually get in there. Desperate times. They're not playing the game out as they might have liked doing it style, again. but they're going to go for the same play once again. This time they're ready, and Levy is able to pop Smurf on the back, but QTV is going to pay with his life as well. Zanzara yeah, taken out, his clone and all, and they are going to finish the job and take down all five. A quadra kill for Levy, and it is all Nexus. And this should be the game for the GPL side. One point back for them, and it's another for Fire, unfortunately. As we look at the standings, Ice, no response, Kira. He tried his absolute hardest, but almost is never enough. Rano P blows a kiss goodbye to the CIS All-Stars as Southeast Asia have taken them down. A big victory for Team Fire. Yeah, it definitely was, actually. It's our first win as a team here at International Wildcard All-Stars. They got to feel happy about that. Definitely. We said a lot coming into